Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. And overnight we had some news coming out of Singapore in regards to their interest rates, which has actually kind of shocked the market ever so slightly. They've managed to keep their uh, rates near zero and um, that's to try and uh, stimulate the local economy. And that's spilled over onto many other Asian markets that's then had a knock on effect on, um, onto Europe, on, on, onto the US. So, Effectively, that's caused some decent moves in the Singapore dollar, and uh, we've seen the Japanese uh, stock market kind of rise up about 3% as well. So the yen has, has, has weakened um, quite substantially as well. We'll have a look at dollar yen in a second from a technical analysis standpoint. Um, but things are looking a little bit different today than they were at the very, very start of the week and the end of last week there. So American markets pushing on that little bit higher as well. We're getting quite close to potential resistance. Uh, so a lot of momentum traders coming back into the fold and um, we basically seen a big uptick in uh, some of the trading volumes that we've seen. Things have been kind of subdued up until now. So the markets are kind of coming back to life uh, ever so slightly. We've also heard some more information regarding uh, Russia and Saudi Arabia and uh, an oil deal. Um, basically, they're still uh, having lots and lots of debates about you know, we're not going to cut production, but maybe may, maybe we could talk about some sort of, uh, of production freeze, but there's not going to be any details anytime soon. So you've seen kind of like crude oil come off that level there as well. So the main fundamentals are around the, the impact of that weaker Singapore dollar and uh, intervention by, by the MES. And uh, that's uh, compounded with some decent data coming out of China. And the dollar has been gaining a little bit of momentum as well as the good news kind of filters through to the US. And when you have a look at the US 30 right now, you get an idea of why that uh, interest rate hike might be coming back on the table. So without further ado, let's go ahead and look at the US 30 from a technical perspective. So this gives you a bit of a flavor of where we are. Um, really strong day um, yesterday, obviously decent day the day before, uh, getting quite close to 79.79. You're getting quite close, we're not a million miles away from that, um, from that, that kind of high that we had there in, uh, in, in May. Uh, the US 30s had a fantastic run from this double bottom all the way right up to the top. 83% of CMC Marks clients are currently short. And probably as this begin, begins to kind of break up, those shorts will, will eventually have to, uh, have to give up and, uh, and go, back to, uh, go back to longs. But we are coming out quite close to a potential resistance level. So depending on your view, if you think that the market is overextended and it's going to sell off, perhaps this level here might be kind of interesting for you as well. If it breaks up through there and gets a close, you could be looking at a technical breakout to then rechallenge 18.367. Moving on to the UK 100, firmly breaking out of another potential resistance at 63.23. Now looking at 64.53 as the next potential uh, resistance. 74% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. The other technicals are relatively neutral, though we did have a bullish crossover on the MACD a few sessions ago. Jumping quickly on to the Japan 225, and uh, obviously you can get a bit of an idea uh, of, of the strength of that rally. So we've had three really strong candles. Uh, stopping just briefly at 16,896 as a potential resistance. We're above the moving averages. Uh, you've got a bullish crossover in the MACD. Japanese market looking at that little bit more uh, bullish this morning, potentially bullish this morning. So looking at dollar yen, it's not like there's a really aggressive move here, but it is moving in the right direction for, uh, for the Japanese stock market. So the dollar has been gaining a little bit of momentum and the yen has been weakening ever so slightly. Uh, it's not really that exciting until it gets back up to 110. Moving on to West Texas crude, and um, you can just see the, the kind of the volatility that, that we've seen it just smashed up through these levels and then reversed back down. If I just quickly again jump onto my five minute interval, you can pretty much just see it's, uh, it broke through that potential support, has then pushed back up, could be a, a potential retracement, and then it's slowly drifted back down. But the size of the moves are so small that it doesn't normally that'd be a fantastic um, potential trade setup. But the fact that the market isn't really kind of moving with that much momentum is kind of interesting. Those 76 percent of CMC Marks clients are currently short. Moving on to gold. Um, yeah, if we get a break below this potential neckline, things get a little bit more interesting. Uh, it could still be a head and shoulders formation. Obviously, higher US interest rates isn't good for gold. Uh, we're below the 21 period SMA, but we're coming up close to that 55 period SMA. The other technicals are relatively neutral. Um, gold's not really that exciting right now. Euro dollar, um, volatile, very volatile. So um, the euro kind of completely gave up its gains against the US dollar. It got absolutely smashed yesterday as the dollar, uh, maybe just a little bit of a, uh, it was a, it's a breakout basically. 
uh, with some decent momentum. So once we broke through these potential um, can tips of these candles, it just accelerated to the downside as a dollar kind of roared back into life, breaking back through that 21 period SMA, and we're a good bit away from the 55. So it's kind of just hanging there right now, looking particularly vulnerable. And then if you have a look at GBP USD, Sterling's having a bit of a tough time right now. One spot 4880 is going to be the next potential support. Still potentially trading within a descending triangle formation with a breakout of this, if it happens, would potentially lead on to one spot 3836, with 57% of CMC Marcus clients currently short. So to finish things up, let's have a quick look at the market calendar. And um, we are looking today at Eurozone CPI, interest rate announcement uh, coupled with a statement from the Bank of England. <clears throat> then you've got the consumer price index and employment data. And then you finish that up with Friday. Some decent Chinese data, and that will again be interesting. Think about overnight gap risk, but things are looking a little bit better uh, in, the, in the market. So if these figures continue to impress, you might begin to uh, see some green shoots of an economic recovery in China. Uh, but as we always say, you know, can you trust the numbers? You know, these, the, the turnaround is coming at a very opportune time to be posting some decent numbers. And then you have uh, industrial production and the University of Michigan sentiment index to round things off. And then I don't think you have any data releases at the weekend and then nothing much on Monday there either. So guys, that's it for me. Very good luck with the trading and join me again uh, next week to find out what happened next. I'm in Stuttgart uh, for the next few days so there won't be another video. Thank you very much and goodbye.